Thanks for watching County Report This Week. I'm Susan Kennedy. We begin this week with a mandate for new oversight for Montgomery County Public School finances. At the request of Council President Valerie Irvin, Inspector General Edward Blancett will take a look at the monthly financial reports the school gives the council. If he believes additional information is needed, the schools will be required to provide it. This move comes after allegations by the council that the schools hit a $14 million surplus during this year's budget deliberations. What he's going to be focusing on are the monthly financial reports to find out what, if anything, is missing from those reports. Obviously, things have been missing, uh, so he's going to be working with us and the Board of Education to find out what those items may or may not be. The county's prescription drug discount program offers low-income and uninsured residents savings on the most commonly prescribed medications. The pilot program was the first in the nation, and in the years since it began, it saved county residents millions of dollars. There are now 1,400 counties participating in the program, with Montgomery serving as the model. Lorna Virgili has the story. Lorna? Susan, Montgomery Rx prescription program has hit a milestone, saving county residents over $20 million in the last six and a half years. We've given our county uninsured and underinsured residents a way to pay for prescription medications. The program is easy to use, and every month more than 4,000 prescri prescriptions are filled within pharmacies throughout Montgomery County using the card. The pilot program started in the county in 2004 in partnership with the National Association of Counties. There are 1,400 counties nationwide that participate in the prescription discount card program. Montgomery takes the lead filling over 4,000 prescriptions every month. Montgomery County is still the most successful county in the country with respect to the savings to their residents on the prescription drug discount program and the number of prescriptions they've filled over the years. So it, uh, it's an outstanding county. With a card, insured and uninsured residents can obtain the prescription discount in about 130 pharmacies countywide. The program is administered by CVS's Caremark. Now what it does is um, it figures the pharmacy's retail price and then it figures our discounted price and then charges whichever one's cheaper. So it's 24% off the uh, pharmacy's retail price and it's on average. It can be much more or it could be less. The discount card is free. It is not insurance but provides a discount off retail price of prescription medications. Cards can be obtained at any library or by calling 311. For County Report This Week, Lorna Virgili. A bill that would prohibit government workers from roadside solicitation on the county's clock has been put on hold. The bill is opposed by the county's firefighters union. They say it would terminate their annual fundraiser for muscular dystrophy. Fire Chief Richie Bauer sent a letter to the council indicating his willingness to impose stricter regulation on firefighters during the Fill the Boot campaign. Council members Phil Andrews and George Leventhal have differing views on the necessity of this legislation. The chief has said as a result of this legislation that he will make sure that uh, if there is a fill the boot campaign that it will be adhered, that the employees conducting it will adhere with state law, they will not go into the street to solicit. So that would be an improvement over the current operation. Uh, of course, that should have been the way it was conducted uh, from the beginning in accordance with state law, but uh, it's better than what has happened so far. Begging by the side of the road is a real problem. I think that those who engage in it, who are who are or claim to be in poverty, uh, deserve attention. I think that problems of hunger and lack of health care and homelessness, which the panhandlers complain of, are very real problems. They're not easy problems to solve. Uh, begging goes back to biblical times. That, you know, no community has really addressed it successfully. But the complaints that I hear are about roadside beggars. I've not heard complaints about a three-day-a-year campaign engaged in by firefighters wearing orange vests that are well-publicized and it's very clear what the purpose is. In recognition of the one-year anniversary of the county's 311 program, County Executive Ike Leggett spent part of his day answering phones and talking with constituents. The executive spoke to several callers who were either requesting a service or inquiring about a program. This hands-on experience also gave the executive the opportunity to get a first-hand look at the operations of this valuable service for county residents. We've gotten the operation down now to a very, very sufficient 
uh, operational and successful mode. Uh, we continue to improve on it, continue to train people, and to make it much more uh, available to citizens. So at this point in time, uh, we have uh, obtained somewhere in the neighborhood of 500,000 contacts thus far, calls and or uh, through the web portal. So I think that's pretty impressive, and it's an excellent service for our citizens. Uh, it's cost efficient. It saves us money. If you want to inquire about a county program or service, you can call 311 or visit the website 24 hours a day at mc311.com. Distracted driving in the United States has become a big problem. According to the U.S. Department of Transportation, in 2009 alone, more than 5,000 people were killed and more than 448,000 people were injured because of distracted driving. Recently at Walt Whitman High School, students learned more about what it means to not pay attention to the road. Isara Pimpawatin has the story. Individuals between the ages of 16 and 24 have the highest traffic crash rate in the county. That's according to the U.S. Department of Transportation. Life is about decisions, choices, and consequences. Students at Walt Whitman High School took a pledge to make the road safer avoid no zones, which are blind spots for big trucks, and signed a no texting promise. Every time you take your hands off the wheel, you take your eyes off the road, you take your head out of the game, it matters to what's happening in front of you if in the event your decision results in an impactful tragedy. Teens and Trucks, a one-time event coordinated by the National Organizations for Youth Safety, U.S. Department of Transportation and the Commercial Vehicle Safety Alliance showed students how to drive safely around large trucks and eliminate distractions. We want to send a message to young drivers that when they're getting their license, it's certainly a, it's very exciting for them and it's exciting time, it's freedom, but it's also a responsibility that they have when they get out there on the road. Thank you. JC Good shares her story of how a distracted driver changed her life forever. The 18 wheelers swerved to try and miss him and hit our car head on. Um, I later found out my parents never even left the scene. They were both dead on impact. I was all but dead. I was giving, given a 10% chance of surviving that night. They probably can't see you. After hearing real-life experiences and receiving a first-hand demonstration from the Maryland State Police, students say they are well-equipped for the road. I just got my permit, so I've been practicing. I've definitely learned that you have to be more aware because even though you may be able to see things, other drivers can't see the same things that you can. For more information on safe driving techniques, visit www.operationsafedriver.com. Still ahead on County Report this week, we'll take you to a conference at Montgomery College that brings you up to date on the latest video gaming technology. And we'll show you how your trip on the National Capital Crescent Trail just got a little safer. I'm Raphael Levin's Bridget Breyer. I'll tell you why I'm wearing a PFD or a personal flotation device when County Report this week continues. Twice the fun, twice the music, twice the fireworks. Two spectacular 4th of July celebrations in Montgomery County at two locations. Germantown Glory and Boyd's, Maryland will have live music from the Baltimore Symphony Orchestra. There will be food, fun, free parking, and events for the kiddies. Bobby and the Believers will perform at the Mid-County Sparkles in Kensington, Maryland. Plus, there will be food and fun activities for the whole family to enjoy. And of course, both events will be highlighted by a fantastic fireworks display. For more information, call or visit our website. Welcome back to County Report this week. Montgomery County Police have made arrests in a recent armed robbery that took place in Olney. Captain Paul Starks is here to tell us about it. Captain, tell us how you caught them. Well, Susan, on June 11th at about 10.57 p.m., the Dunkin' Donuts located at 18100 Village Mart Drive in Olney reported an armed robbery. Officers from the 4th District responded and preliminary investigation revealed that two subjects, one armed with a gun, ordered two employees to the floor and tied them up. The two suspects left with an undisclosed amount of funds. Through investigation, robbery detectives determined that one of those employees was involved in the robbery with two accomplices. There are three local men now under arrest charged with conspiracy to commit armed robbery and armed robbery. Okay, so the residents of Olney can rest easy. 
That's correct. Okay, good work. Thank you very much, Captain Paul Starks, Montgomery County Police. According to the National Center for Health Statistics, there are over 4,000 drowning deaths each year in the United States. As the summer begins to heat up, local organizations are teaching the community how to stay safe while cooling down. Rockville 11's Bridget Breuer has more. Bridget? That's right, we're here at the first annual Water Safety Day, a joint effort with the city of Gaithersburg, Montgomery County, and the city of Rockville to teach kids and parents how to stay safe in and around the pool. So, like Reach, throw, don't go was one example of a life-saving technique taught at Water Safety Day. Aquatic Supervisor Debbie Bocamp hosted the event at Rockville Swim and Fitness Center. It's very exciting. We're getting a lot of new people um, using the facility, it seems, that uh, haven't been here in the past. and. We're welcoming them all, but hoping that maybe they want to swing by and, and come learn some information today so that they can have a safe, fun summer here with us. Well, especially now, my son is in kindergarten, and this is the first time that he's really going to be out and about this summer um, with friends and activities. So I want to make sure he really understands how to be safe. Other safety stations around the pool included swim level testing and proper life jacket fitting. Basically what we're doing here at this table is we're trying to do different sizes and everything like that. We, uh, we're fitting um, kids and we're showing them all their different uh, devices we have. Like I'll show you real quick. Um, here we have an infant size um, for uh, basically children 0 to 30 pounds. And uh, as you can see it says infant. And uh, what it has here is it has a neck support so that when in the water that it keeps a child that small, um, its head above water. And people think that a life jacket equals no parents needed um, and no supervision, and that's really a scary um, myth that a lot of people have. The American Red Cross has some tips for staying safe at the pool. Swim with a buddy in a supervised area. Be cool, follow the rule. Look before you leave. Don't just pack it, wear your jacket. For more information about the Rockville Swim and Fitness Center, go online to rockvillemd.gov slash swim center. For Rockville 11, I'm Bridget Breuer. Montgomery College held a conference for game and web developers on the college's Rockville campus. Industry representatives informed the attendees on the latest technology. The game and web developers conference took place at Montgomery College's Rockville campus. The four-hour event included industry and academic speakers, a live-action demo of the popular mobile game Angry Birds, and a panel discussion from MC graduates. Montgomery College President Dr. Darion Pollard gave the welcoming address and spoke about how video game technology is improving lives. Simulations help train doctors on complex surgeries, emergency responders on how to control the spread of the disease. Gaming industries help today's military fight wars. Video games fight obesity with interactive workouts that actually measure how hard you are working and whips you into shape if you're slacking. Programming Director Professor Melissa Lismi outlined the day's events and welcomed the attendees. So many eager, enthusiastic visitors today. Adjunct Professor Zach Gordon noted how people access the web much easier today than in the recent past. So that's really changing uh, the face of what the web looks like for us and how we access it. Adobe Flash Builder Product Manager Adam Lehman gave a presentation on scripting language for web design lower level languages, it's a 3GL language, which means you can really code pretty quickly with it. If you know JavaScript, you're gonna, pretty, you're gonna pick up ActionScript really, really well. Environment artist Megan Sawyer of Bethesda Game Studios gave us a look into the life of an environment artist, what they do, and day-to-day -day life at a video game company. The tires, <laughs> uh, everything you can touch, see, whatever, that isn't a character, creature, or what have you. MC Gaming students of the Introduction to Game Development course put on a live action version of the popular mobile game Angry Birds. There have been some recent safety improvements to the National Capital Crescent Trail. In Bethesda near Little Falls Parkway, the trail has been realigned to make it easier and safer for folks in cars, on bikes and on foot. 
Here at the intersection of the Capitol Crescent Trail and Little Falls Parkway, we've done a little bit of trail improvement to kind of help with the uh, trail users and the cars as the trail users are crossing the intersection. And if you can see, we've angled the, the refuge section in the middle of the intersection so that the bikers kind of have to slow down as they're entering the intersection before they actually cross. And this angle of the trail it faces the cars that are coming, so it gives you ample time to see traffic before you enter the intersection, and it gives cars enough time to see trail users before they get ready to cross. Still to come on County Report this week, the second in our series where we follow Council Member Nancy Florine through her treatment for breast cancer. And we'll show you how to spot signs of elder abuse. Keep it here on County Report This Week. Serving your community is a great feeling. The Montgomery County Volunteer Center can connect you to hundreds of volunteer opportunities available throughout the area. Are you a student, senior, professional, community group, or business looking to serve? Simply visit our website to select what's right for you and help celebrate the 25th anniversary of Community Service Day by taking part in our Pledge 25 Challenge. The Montgomery County Volunteer Center. Make an impact in your community. Where will you serve? Welcome back. Last month, Councilmember Nancy Florine announced she had been diagnosed with stage 1 breast cancer. Ms. Florine's cancer was detected through a routine mammogram, which prompted her to get the word out to other women about being proactive in their own health. In part two of our series, A New Chapter, we'll find out what the next step in her treatment will entail. When Nancy Florine got the diagnosis she had stage one breast cancer, things began to move very quickly. Within just a few weeks, she had a lumpectomy and was back at the doctor's office. I'm Nancy Florine. Hi. Nancy. Jerry, I'm the department director. Welcome. Oh, hi. To go hey. over her pathology report and discuss the next step in her treatment. Almost a week since you had your procedure done. Tell us a little bit about how you're feeling. Fine, really. Um, still a little sore, but I can move my arm. Something I was worried about, and that's a good thing. And um, I've been getting some rest, and I think I'm fine. Everything has a downstream effect. Dr. Lori Hersher is a radiation oncologist with Suburban Hospital. She says thanks to early detection, more women are surviving breast cancer than ever before. That kind of thing. In the case of Ms. Florine, radiation is the next step in the treatment process. Radiation is basically energy. It is very focused and um, precise in where we put the energy, but it is basically high energy waves. Um, you can put your purse down and I'm going to have you stand up on the scale and get your weight. Council Member Florine's treatment will cover six weeks of radiation therapy, five days a week. Dr. Hersher says there can be side effects to the treatment, but most are localized to the site of the radiation. There are potential side effects to radiation therapy, and it's basically dependent on where the radiation is being delivered. So in this case, it is basically the breast that is being uh, radiated. The most common side effect for breast irradiation is skin irritation. It's much like getting a mild to, well, actually it could be anywhere from a mild to moderate to, to severe sunburn. In the meantime, Ms. Florine says she is trying to pace herself in her duties. But I'm going to put some limits on my, my time this summer. But that can be a challenge for someone who is as dedicated as she. It's going to be an interesting balancing act this summer. She was back at work less than two weeks after her lumpectomy, and she also made an appearance at the council's evening town hall meeting June 15th. At least the decision makers knew that this year was going to be a challenge, and they knew that a year ago. But in the end, she says this has been an educational experience that has given her the opportunity to help others who are on the same path. I've heard so many stories from so many women and men about their cancer experiences, and I think it is important for people to feel comfortable in talking about this and, and also helping the community know how to deal with it. You know, people are a little nervous about me and I'm sure about other people in a similar situation. And if this, this helps eliminate some of the barriers, I'll, I'm all for it. And Dr. Hersher's advice? Hello. 
eat well, exercise, stay positive. And what about those women out there who haven't gotten their mammogram and they're 40 years old or older? What do you say to them? I would say time to get a mammogram. Montgomery County's Women's Cancer Control Program provides breast and cervical screening to eligible women through vouchers for free mammograms, clinical breast exams, and pap tests for cervical cancer. To find out if you are eligible, call 240-777-1750 and in Spanish, 240-777-1750. 4549. Elder abuse and negligence are very real problems here in Montgomery County. And the sixth annual Elder Abuse Awareness Day, hosted by Asbury Methodist Village, helps shed some light on these issues and the signs of elder abuse to look out for. Elder abuse, an issue rarely addressed, affects thousands of older persons each year. The World Elder Abuse Day was created to promote an understanding of elder abuse and how we all can help stop this invisible crime. The Montgomery County Elder and Vulnerable Adult Abuse Prevention Task Force sponsored their first Elder Abuse Awareness Day. World Elder Abuse Awareness Day started six years ago at the United Nations in New York and it's just come about because there is uh, such a huge amount of elder abuse and it is so underreported. It's rampant, it's not only in this country, it's in countries around the world. The growing problem of elder abuse happens in different forms, physical, sexual, domestic, emotional, and even financial. I was talking with uh, a woman who uh, had uh, been abused by her daughter in a sense that her daughter had uh, taken eleven thousand uh, dollars from her when uh, when she was in, addicted. Council member Phil Andrews presented a proclamation to Asbury Methodist Village and tells us the essence of bringing awareness to elder abuse. Well this is a, an important event to help raise awareness about the fact that there is elder abuse in Montgomery County as well as everywhere else and and yet it's often unreported. Uh, elder abuse is a felony we charge with uh, elder abuse, we're charged with elder neglect, we charge with first degree assault, we're, we're, which are all felonies, um, reckless endangerment, uh, second degree assault, which is a misdemeanor, we charge all the way down the line. For more information about how you can join the fight against elder abuse, visit the Montgomery County website at montgomerycountymd.gov. Up next on County Report, if you are looking to open up your heart and your home to a new four-legged friend, we'll have our pet of the week for you. And more on growing an herb garden without a plot of land. Keep it here on County Report this week. You can never know which pool safety step will save a life. Until it does. No matter how safe you feel, adding multiple safety steps can mean the difference between a close call and a call to 911. Simple steps save lives. To learn some new ones, visit PoolSafely.gov. Welcome back to County Report This Week. In this week's transportation update, news about the closing of Cedar Lane near the Rock Creek Bridge. Hi, I'm Tom Pogue, Community Relations Manager for the Department of Transportation. Here's an update for Montgomery County. MCDOT is currently rehabilitating the bridge on Cedar Lane over Rock Creek. As part of this work, Cedar Lane is now closed at the creek and will remain closed for the summer. The bridge is expected to reopen on or about August 24th. A temporary bridge will be available, but only for pedestrians. This project will also add a hiker-biker path between Rock Creek Trail and Elmhurst Trail. During the bridge closure, ride-ons Route 34 will be detoured between Park Hill Drive and Beach Drive, with service to three bus stops in each direction in that portion of the public route temporarily discontinued. Instead, Route 34 will run between the Wheaton and Medical Center metro stations via Cedar Lane, Beach Drive, Connecticut Avenue, and Jones Bridge Road. There will be no additional stops, and an extra bus will be added to ensure the route operates on time. When the bridge reopens, the service will return to its normal routing. For more information on construction updates and transportation alternatives, go to the county's website at montgomerycountymd.gov slash BRAC. We're working to keep you moving. 
In our Pet of the Week segment this week, we have a feline named Xena who is in need of a new home. Here's Kathy Stanhope. Hi, this is Kathy Stanhope with your Pet of the Week at the Montgomery County Humane Society, and I'm here with Xena. Xena is a distinguished older lady. She's about 10. Her family loved her very much, but they unfortunately had to move into a place that didn't allow cats, so they brought her here hoping that she would find a new home. And we are told that Zena is very reliable about using a litter box, which is a very good cat quality. And she is a purr machine. She likes to sit on laps. As you can see, she loves to get her head scratched. She just is purring up a storm. And I understand she's quite vocal. She likes, if you talk to her, she likes to talk back. As you can hear, maybe she's doing a few meows right now. And June is Adopt a Shelter Cat Month. And in conjunction with the ASPCA and with Fresh Step Litter, when you come down and adopt a shelter cat, you will no longer have to pay any fees for the month of June except for your licensing fee. All other fees will be waived for the month of June for cats two years old and older. Right, and Zena definitely qualifies. As I said, she's about 10, but she's got a lot of good years left in her, and she's definitely looking for a nice lap to sit in and share a lot of love. And I don't know if you can see her beautiful green eyes. She's just a sweet cat. So come on down and visit Zena or another cat just like her at the Montgomery County Humane Society in Rockville. Give us a call at 240-773-5967 or visit Zena or another cat like her on the web at mchumane.org. In this week's segment from our friends at Brookside Gardens, we get some more tips on growing an herb garden in a container. Hi, I'm Leslie McDermott with Brookside Gardens. Last week we talked about planting patio tomatoes in containers out on your deck or balcony. And this week what we're going to talk about is companion plants and herbs, planting herbs. And one great companion plant for the tomato is basil. A lot of people don't think about putting their herbs in with other plants, but this is an excellent um, companion plant for the tomato for a few different reasons. One, they both like hot, sunny weather. They grow well together. They sort of support one another. Um, two, they both flavor each other. And we all know how great tomato and basil is together. Uh, an additional benefit is because the, the basil has a very pungent, strong, sweet smell. It tends to uh, f deter garden pests and flies. So that's a great reason. I also love to... It, put herbs in con small containers. And you can really do this any time of year, as long as you have a sunny window. These also make a wonderful gift, by the way. If, you, uh, if you're going to somebody's house, and you, or for a little housewarming gift you want to add, you can just put together a really quick container filled with herbs. And it's sort of a nice blessing on the house. So happy gardening. That does it for County Report this week. We leave you with some scenes from the closing ceremonies of the U.S. Open, which took place right here in Montgomery County at Congressional Country Club. I'm Susan Kennedy. Thanks for watching. Two MC students have been awarded full scholarships to attend the 2011 National Conference for College Women Student Leaders at the University of Maryland. Solani Newby and Jatender Cower were selected for their academic success, leadership skills, and community service efforts. MC Honor students won eight of 19 discipline panels at the Beacon Conference that celebrates the achievements of two-year college students in research, writing, and speaking. 
27 MC students were invited to present their research after submitting 38 papers this year. Continue your story by enrolling in MC's Accelerated Program in Business. The MCAP program is designed for working adults to complete an associate's degree within two years. It offers big advantages in cost savings, convenience, and academic credentials for future opportunities. For more information about the endless possibilities at your community college, visit our website.